Welcome to Using Customer Support Center Tools. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the organization tools that we have available in LMI WorkNet to help you with organizing your uh, LMI WorkNet customers and having access to their information so you can help them with reaching their training and employment goals. So uh, today we're going to cover a few items uh, that includes uh, creating your LMI WorkNet partner account, as well as we're going to take a look at the Customer Support Center uh, tools and the uh, corresponding tools uh, for your customers. And then we'll take a look at some of the reporting uh, tools that are available currently. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and start out with the overview for the partner tools. Now, in order to have access to the Customer Support Center tools, you will need to have your LMI WorkNet account. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. In order to have an LMI WorkNet account, you'll need to uh, go to LMI WorkNet and uh, sign up for an LMI WorkNet account. So LMIWorkNet.com, select Sign Up, and you can create your LMI WorkNet account. Now what's going to happen after that is you are going to need to take a look at the LMI WorkNet Service Finder and see if your organization is already um, an LMI WorkNet partner. And if it's not, you can go ahead and request to become a partner site. So you can add a location, edit location. And you can request to become a partner site. And whenever that request comes in, we'll review the information and uh, approve you know, for you to become a partner site. Um, once you have your LMI WorkNet account set up, then you can send an email to info at LMIWorkNet.com, and we'll review your information, make sure that um, all the information is accurate and it's appropriate for you to have an LMI WorkNet partner account, and then we will connect you to your organization and give you access to the partner tools. So once you have your partner account, then you have access to a variety of tools that are in LMI WorkNet. And one of the main things that you're going to look at will be your customer support center, because that is where you can start putting together your groups of customers. So you can view assessment results. You can complete assessments for that customer. You can look at their employment 101 plans, as well as their uh, certificate of completion as well as their pre and post assessments. You can help your customers by recovering their passwords. And then you can also use the messaging tool to communicate directly with your customers. So uh, whenever you get your LMI WorkNet account as a partner account, you can go to the Customer Support Center. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And you'll create a personal group. And with your personal group, you can invite customers to and partners to join your group. Once they accept the invitation to join your group, then you can further organize those customers by creating subgroups. So let's go ahead and take a look at a customer group and where you access, or the customer support center and where you access that. Okay. So I have an account. I'm logged in as an LMI WorkNet partner. And I'm going to go to my dashboard. I'm going to select Partner Tools. And you can see I have my assessment dashboard. And then we have our Customer Support Center. So I'm going to go ahead and select Customer Support Center. And with this partner, they, this partner has been added to several different groups. They've already started their own personal group, so they don't have the button up here anymore. But if this is the first time that you've come to this page, you'll see a button right here that says Create Your Personal Group. 
to select that and you'll automatically have your personal group. If you are an ELWIA uh, staff person that has access to IWDS customers, you will see your um, IWDS group down here. So whoever you have access to in IWDS, you also have access to in LMI WorkNet through the Customer Support Center. If you're part of a special program such as DEI or EPIC, you will also see those groups listed here. So those are special programs that where your customers and you have been added to those specific programs. Okay. So for this example, we have a person that is simply has access to their own personal group as well as a couple of other uh, personal groups. So we're going to go ahead and select one of these personal groups. And you'll see that we have tabs along the top. Customers, partners, subgroups, invitation. And in order to uh, add people to your to your group, you're going to use the invitation process. There's a couple different types of invitations. You have one where you can send individual um, invitations to join the customer group to a person's email. And so you simply type in the email address and hit invite customer and the email is automatically sent to that customer. Or you can use the group invitation. With a group inv invitation, you type in a passcode. Let's do. You type in a passcode. Now the passcode is a, a needs to be a unique passcode. It's active for seven days, and you can include you know, letters, spaces, numbers. Um, you might want to be careful with, you know, like different spaces and, and everything just because sometimes it's harder for the customers to type in, but you're welcome to do that. And then you enter in a title. Okay. And then you'll see there's a description. And so you can customize the description. We don't want you to remove any of the text up there, but if you wanted to add additional text to this uh, area that you're able to do that. And then you select Create Invitation. So your invitation has been created. And it gives you the information down below. So you could just copy and paste it, paste it if you wanted to put it into a document or in an email. You could do that. Or it's, let's say you have a group of customers that are coming in for an orientation and you need them to be in your group. Then you can print out the invitation business card. Oh, it locked me out. And then you would be able to see, um, you'll see we have the different business cards that are available. And you can print them out and provide the, you know, each individual that comes to your orientation with one of these business cards. And then as you go through the process, you can direct them to go to the URL and either log in or create their account and enter the passcode, and then accept the invitation. So this process is the same, whether you're doing this for customers or partners. Whenever a customer accepts the invitation, they will be placed into a customer tab. Whenever a partner accepts the invitation, they will be added to the partner tab. So let's say over time, maybe you've done several orientations, or you've worked with the different groups, and you have you know, a combination of different types of customers in your group. And you need to set up a subgroup. And 
we have subgroups that are available. You can create these. And the purpose of them is to organize your customers in a way that uh, matches your workflow. So let's say, you know, maybe in some cases you have some uh, community youth employment program for the various years and you want to organize your customers that way. Or maybe you have a group of adults and some of them are in manufacturing and some of them are in TDL and some of them are in healthcare. Um, you could create subgroups that way as well. So to add a subgroup, just look, uh, add subgroup and you add the name and then put a meaningful description. Okay, and then you can save that. And once you save the uh, subgroup, you can select the subgroup, and you can add customers to your subgroup. Now, the adding customers to your subgroup is a little bit different because you're going to select the button to add customers, and you can type and search, so your list will be longer, obviously. Um, but you can select the individual and add them to your group and then they're automatically added to the group. So these are for people that are already in your subgroup that have already given you a, an approval to add them um, you know into the invitation group and so it's not you're not going to gain any greater level detail of information. Again, the subgroup is just to organize people that are already have accepted your invitation to be part of the group. You don't have to do anything with partners um, for subgroups because partners that have access to the parent group, the original group, will also have access to the subgroups because they already have access to those customers anyway. And again, subgroups are just a way to organize the existing list of customers. Let's say you have a person that has, or I'm sorry, let's say you have a subgroup and, you're, and you had a typo and you're like, oh darn, I need to really fix this. So let me just go ahead. I need to edit the description. I can go ahead and edit the description and click update and my information has been saved. Okay. If I want to go back to the parent group, I just can go to the parent group section and go back to that overall listing of my customers. If I need to go back to my full list of groups, I can click on search or I could click on groups in the in the header and I would see all again all the customers that I all my my listing of customers that I have access to. Now let's take a look at some of the tools that you can see. So we're going to take a look at one of these uh, customers. You'll see the username, their first name, last name, their email address. Select the link, and you can go to the customer's account. And over on the left hand side is uh, just a real quick profile information. This will be, um, be this will be updated as we go ahead and continue to add enhancements to the customer support center. Um, but here's some quick information for you. And then you can click on reset password so you can update the person's password as needed. You can click send a message. So you can um, you know, type in a message to this person. You can send it as a message, or you can send it as a message and an email. You also have access to what we call their public profile, so you can see a little bit more information about this customer. You can see what groups this person is in. And you can see their assessments. So if they have any um, saved assessments in their account, you'd be able to see that. So we have the disability 
benefits estimator, employment 101, you can tell this person doesn't, hasn't taken a perennial assessment and they haven't taken a post assessment, but they do have you know, their employment 101 guide um, started. So you can take a look at their saved results there. This person, again, is a sample account, so we don't have the actual test scores here, but you'd be able to see the number of times and when they've taken the NACTI 21st Century Skills Assessment. When you click on the score, um, if this was a real person, you would see the different areas that have been graded within the NACTI assessment, so you could see their scores for those uh, areas. We have the observational evaluation. So you can see the past information uh, for this person and how they, what they scored, what the description was for each of these areas. Or you can complete one. Um, now the observational evaluation is meant to um, be kind of like how, you know, set up for how, uh, similar to how an employer would evaluate their uh, staff, and it covers the, you know, essential workplace skills. And so um, the, but the, the, it was set up so that it would be um, provided, you know, completed for those that are maybe like in a training program or in some type of, um, you know, training that's over a period of time um, that's preparing them for a job. So you could have, you know, the, the training provider could say, well, you know, here are the things that we're going to take a look at. These are the expectations of how um, their behavior is to be in, in the classroom. And so what we're going to use that is to, um, you know, help you learn what the appropriate behavior would be for in the workplace regarding your um, essential workplace skills. And each of these has a rubric built in to the evaluation. So the, pro the provider, the training provider could go in they would, could have access to the customer, or you could do it for them either way. And they would just simply select the person and you know, complete the assessment and then save the results. And once they have completed that assessment for the individual, then their assessment results are saved in their customer group. And then the... Um, customer is notified via message in their LMI Workman account that an evaluation has been completed for them. Okay. So then we look at worksite evaluation. It's very similar to the observational evaluation, um, but it's intended to be used for those that are in um, a worksite placement. So maybe, you know, they have getting work, site, work experience or <clears throat> And they are um, in an internship, something like that. And then you can view their past evaluations. Um, you can select a new evaluation. And you'll see it's a slightly different, whereas the observational eva evaluation takes you directly into the <coughs> evaluation. <coughs> Excuse me. The work site evaluation asks you, you know, who's the employer, so you can identify the employer. Or, or add an employer, you can um, enter the job title or the work site and the work site start end date. If I had added this information in here, then I could set a contact or add a new contact. And when you do this, what it'll do is send or you, you identify the contact and then you have the ability to send them an invitation to complete the assessment. So the person that your, that you identified as the contact that you want to complete the evaluation um, doesn't have to have an LMI Workman account because what it'll do, the system will send them an invitation. They open up the invitation, they click on the link, and um, then they can complete the evaluation online. 
uh, submit the evaluation, and then it automatically populates the person's on my workman account, and the customer is notified that they have a new evaluation that has been completed. Or the other option is you you don't need to you can skip step three and go directly to step four, and you can go ahead and do a worksite evaluation. And in order to do that, um, you just go ahead and enter in the information just like you would for the observational assessment. And it goes through and it has the uh, rubric inside of it just like the observational assessment. Okay. So those are the items that we have available on the assessment tab. One of the items that we don't have a separate uh, place for because it just links directly to the results would be the view interest. And <clears throat> these are, we have different places in All My Work Net um, where the customers can access the CIS um, skill, skills and interest surveys. One of those places is it's part of Employment 101, and also we have that available as a tool within the All My Work Net pages as well. <clears throat> so once a person completes the one or more of the skill and interest inventories, then you can go ahead and click View Interest. You can click on one other answer, one other completed assessments, restore the answers, and you can see the results of their skills and interest inventory. So all of those are available within the assessments tab on in the customers um, that's available through the customer support center that's linked to that customer. The next area is optimal resume. <coughs> And Optimo Resume is a tool that's available within LMI WorkNet. And as your customer completes their uh, resume, portfolio, letters, um, there's an interview practice area, there's a video resume, there's a website page, and as you, as your customers have, are completing those and saving those, They'll be available, so you'll be able to see, it'll say, you know, it was either assessment, resume, and you'll have a link so you can view them. You won't be able to edit them, but you'll be able to view them. Or you could say, um, hey, sample account, you're supposed to have your resume uh, uploaded, and so you can say, you know, you need to, you can send them a message and say, you know, please complete your resume by Friday, something like that, um, you can send them as both an email message and an All My Work Net message. You can send that to the customer. Oh, my, sample. Like my, my sample account person is acting up here. OK, <clears throat> so those are some of the uh, tools that are available in the Customer Support Center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over and we're going to talk about some of the tools and, and look at this uh, some more uh, from the customer's perspective. So in the PowerPoint that will be available with the recording, we have this PowerPoint and additional instructions that are on all the topics that I'm covering today. So we have um, where you can invite your customers. We take a look at that. One other thing real quick that I'd like to show you. We talked about going through the Customer Support Center <clears throat> and all of those tools. Um, let me go back and have you take a look at the assessment dashboard. Um, again, you can look at your individual assessments customer's assessment uh, through the Customer Support Center, but we also have the assessment dashboard where you can narrow down the results by the different groups. 
you can see this is the CIS assessment. Maybe we'll change that so it shows a skills and uh, interest survey up there next to it. And so you can see who doesn't have it complete and who does. Same thing with Employment 101. Who doesn't have a pre-assessment, who does. Same thing with the post-assessment. Now, one thing that we'll cover in a little bit with the Employment 101 is the, um, the pre-assessment, it just is. It's either complete or it's not complete. It's scored, but there's really no passing or failing. It's just you either did it or you didn't do it. With the post-assessment, you can see the people that haven't completed the post-assessment yet. You can see the ones that have completed it and scored 70% or higher. Or you can see the examples of uh, customers who have completed the post-assessment but have scored less than 70%. Then we also have the partner initiated, and I guess this is something I didn't mention before, but the customers can access the CIS Skills and Interest Surveys as well as the Employment 101 on their own. Um, but there are several assessments that need to have um, a partner initiate those assessments. So, for example, the NACD 21st Century Skills Assessment, that is a proctored assessment, but it's, and it's something that they would normally have to pay for. But you, as an Online WorkNet partner, can offer that for free through Online WorkNet. So we have instructions that are available with this webinar that, you know, walk you through the process of becoming a NACD proctor site, how to order the assessments, it's really simple. The, once you order the assessments, they're available immediately, and then your customer logs into the account. They can complete the NACD 21st Century Skills Assessment. NACD does the official scoring. Those results come back into All My WorkNet automatically. And so you can see customers that don't have assessment results, customers that have successfully completed the NACD 21st Century Skills Assessment, and customers who have knocked the results but haven't successfully completed the assessment. And one of the nice things about uh, successfully completing the assessment is that they will earn a certificate um, of completion uh, from NACTI. Then the observational assessment or evaluation, we uh, walk through that and so you can see customers who don't have any observational evaluation, customers that have successfully completed the evaluation, and customers who have one but that's not been successfully completed. And the same thing goes with worksite evaluations. They don't have results, they could successfully have results, or they unsuccessfully um, have, completed, have the evaluation completed. So each of these items, when you click on this, it will give you a listing of customers. So you can select the link to the customer to view that customer information. Or you can export the results. When you export the results, it will export into an Excel file. And for each of the items that where you can take the assessment more than once, it's going to take the highest score that was earned and that's the result that it's going to place in the export, along with the date when that was completed. OK. So we talked about the different assessments that were available through the Customer Support Center. We talked about viewing the saved work that is uh, Employment 101. The other thing we have, um, if you're going to be incorporating Employment 101, we do have the Career Plan Instructor Guide and Job Search Plan Instructor Guide. And those um, will also be available. We'll make those available with this webinar as well. Again, you can see the resumes um, builder information that when they save it, so these are the listing of items that are available through the resume builder. And you can reset the customer's password as well as send them a message. Now, uh, one of the, we do have an instruction sheet for having them set up their LMI WorkNet account. So that will be included in the 
instructions as well, I'm sorry, with the webinar as well. Um, but it really is important that all the customers have, well, they have to have their Illinois WorkNet account or they can't be included in the group. Um, if you send a person an invitation and they haven't already set up their Illinois WorkNet account, it's okay because they'll be prompted to, to set up their Illinois WorkNet account once they have, um, you know, once, when, when they go through to uh, accept the app, uh, invitation. And it is important that if at all possible, um, the customers only have one account. So if they think they have an Illinois WorkNet account, and if they're not sure, you know, have them go through the password recovery part of it. And if they still, you know, like, I, I could have sworn I have an Illinois WorkNet account. I just don't remember. Um, you can always email info at IllinoisWorkNet.com and have us look it up for you um, because it really is important that they just use one account. Um, you know, if they, especially, you know, if they're in your customer group and they're, they've been using account and an account and then they all of a sudden somehow, you know, remember their whatever, get mixed up and use their old username and password and they save things in a different account, now they have information saved in two different accounts and it's just, it's just not pretty. So, Again, you know, we're at, whenever possible, treat, please try to work with them to make sure that they only have one Illinois WorkNet account. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some of this through a customer's, different customer's um, account. Just go ahead and open this up real quick. Click at www.illinoisworknet.com. I'll just log in to my account. And so when you log into the customer logs into the account, it looks just like just like you would. And so they're going to click on my dashboard, and they won't. They'll see the disability benefits estimator, resumes, and everything like that. They will not see partner tools that you see down here because I'm a I'm a partner. So they can log into their Elmi WorkNet account, and for example, they can go to Employment 101. So with my account, you can see that I've already marked that I have taken the pre-assessment. So it tells me my score. It tells me a little bit about if I haven't taken the account or taken the pre-assessment. It tells me what to expect. 25 multiple choice questions. It's not timed. I can only take it once. It's graded, but it's not counted against me. And these are the topics that are covered. <coughs> My next step is to complete the Employment 101 Guide. Now, the Employment 101 Guide was set up originally for the Summer Youth Employment Program in 2014. And we have the list of activities and the type of information that's saved based on our previous Summer Youth Employment Programs. Um, and we just packaged it in a way that we had everything all in one place for the customer so they don't have to go, you know, know to go to this page, and I have to go back here to save my answers. It's all in one package. So we have different modules. You can see we have preparing a career plan, prepare your job search plan, and achieving your goals. These are the different areas within each module. Go explore careers, explore training, get qualified, pre get prepared, find jobs, start a job, set financial goals, practice skills for success. So you can jump into any of these at any point in time. Um, you can also see that I have self-identified that I've completed these three items. Uh, that's, that's something, it doesn't happen automatically, but as you go through the employment guide, you can mark off that you did it. So if I did it and I came back later, I could say, oh yeah, that's right, I did do those. Let me just go ahead and start with get prepared. So 
then I'm just going to go ahead and jump into um, Explore Careers. So this is how your Employment 101 is set up. We have the main area that has all the recommended steps. We have them collapsed just to try to keep the focus on these are the basic steps. And I want to click inside here. And when I, or when I click on each of these, I get some instructions. For example, read this article. So I click on the link to read this article. And the article is right here for me. So I don't have to go someplace else and come back. It's already there. If I wanted to do the career cluster inventory, that's what I was talking about earlier with that CIS assessment, it's right here. And it lets me open that. This opens in a new tab so I, so I don't get confused. Okay, I'm going to go to explore job, uh, jobs, required skills, credentials, and wages information. I can see the different um, career clusters. And then I can see the little arrows up here, which identify the Illinois pathway areas. So I could select one of these items, or the career, career clusters. And I can take a look at the different jobs that are available in these uh, career clusters. So I'm going to look at disposal workers. So I select an occupation. And in each of these, I can see different information. So I can see an overview. I can see Employment Outlook. I can see Wages and Trends. I think, oh, well, this looks like it might be pretty good, so I'm going to add the occupation to my career plan. So when I did that, you'll notice over here on the right-hand side, this yellow area, it, it, it changes as I do things as I go through the process. So I wanted to add that occupation to my career plan. Now you can see I can say, oh, is this is this a job in demand? Well, let me go and look at you know the employment outlook. OK. So it's moderate. In some places, it's high. So maybe if I'm in Lake County, I can say high. Then I can look at the wages. So if I'm you know, in Lake County, I can say, oh, they make $45,000 a year, so I'll put that in here. And then skills and training, let's see. Or how about, let's do an overview. What are some of the things I like? I can literally copy and paste information in here. I can maybe look at, you know, working conditions. and. Maybe I don't like some of these things. I can put that here. And I can save that information. And that's saved in my account, my career plan. So it's the same basic point as you go through each of these. Um, all the information is right there in the center. And as you move through each of these areas, you can it updates your career plan right there next to you. And you can switch in between each of these areas. Um, career areas. You can hit the next button to go to the next section, which is explore training. Learn about the pros and cons. We have identify the training program, so you can enter keyword and search for training programs. And just like I did for the careers, um, if I if I was looking up air conditioning system mechanics and enter that program into the keyword search. I could pick out one of these and go through and do the search. And then I could just save the program information in my account. And so you can just click Next, and you can keep going through each one. So it's making a plan, learning about financial aid, getting earning credentials. And then you move on into your job search plan. So the different things you need to do to get prepared, um, the different aspects of uh, finding a job. So it's networking, searching for job openings. So if I'm searching for job openings, I can save uh, the information for um, like my job searches that I've already done. So I could enter employer information, application information, 
enter view information so I could take notes on those and enter all that information in there. And then that would let me, that would be a way for me to tell you how that job uh, interview went or where I am in the process for finding a job. And we have next, we have achieve your goals. So we have information here about accepting the job for getting ready the first day, and then some information about managing the money that you're going to earn from this job and creating a budget. And then also some other um, aspects like to help them with um, being successful in the workplace. So one of them is violence prevention and awareness, as well as um, continuing to build their, their skills. So that's Employment 101. Uh, the other area is resumes. So we use Optimal Resume. And this is a free tool for you and your customers if you're using it through Illinois WorkNet. And your, one of the neat things as being a partner, if you already have a, 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 a resume, whatever, how, whatever approach you want to use, but let's say you have sample resumes that you want to use and you use them often with your customers as a starting point. One of the things that you can do is you can send that sample resume to us, to info at LMIWorkNet.com, and we can have give it to Optimal Resume. And what they will do is upload that resume into our resume builder so it can be a sample resume. So you can have your customers automatically access that sample resume. So for example, if I'm going to create a new resume, and I'm going to call it Sample, Sample 1. I could upload a resume. If you upload a resume, you can't edit the resume. So that's kind of a, you know, that's not a preferred method. But I'm going to name my resume. I'm going to start my resume. And there's different things you can do in here. You can start from scratch. You can look at different components and use those components to build your resume. Or you can use a sample. So if you had a sample that you wanted to use, yeah, so your customer would browse sample, because of course we would have your sample in there. Um, we would categorize it, so whatever category it goes with. So we'll put healthcare. You can identify whether it's entry level, mid career, or experienced. So you'll see in this particular instance, there's eight samples. I'm just going to pick one. And you can use that sample. So your customer can go ahead and have this information in here, and they can start typing, you know and editing it to whatever um, matches whatever their needs are. And then they have that information and it's saved within the resume builder. So they can easily customize resumes um, for specific jobs, but it gives them a good starting point. Now, this is what you would be able to see. You would be able to see um, this resume that I just added, but you would not be able to edit it. So, um, but you would be able to view it. So there's lots of tools that are available in the Resume Builder that are pretty pretty neat. We have Resume Builder, Letter Builder, Portfolio Builder. The assessment piece is where they can um, you know, go in here and create an assessment. And then they said that they can, you know, they can look at if I had a job and internship, I could say, you know, wherever I got this job, these are the skills that I received, and save it. So really, what it, these assessments are pretty neat because you can identify examples of how, like you're at building your evidence of um, supporting the fact that you have, you know, writing skills, reading comprehension, time management, and again, these can be uh, these skills that have like starter skill sets based on your industry and, and so forth. So, um, but it's pretty neat because you can. Um, you know, identify, you know, maybe you had a speech, so you, you give an example of how, you know, you built your speaking skills or developed your speaking skills in a specific course or, you know, volunteer work or in real life examples or on the job. Okay. So those are examples of the optimal resume. So again, uh, if you've completed the career and interest inventories, those are available here. Um, notice 
if I sent a message to my customer, and I could send the message as either an L My WorkNet message or an L My WorkNet message and an email, then those are available um, for your customers. So you can see it's available from my dashboard, but it's also available from this ribbon up at the top that has my listing of uh, messages as well. Hang out over here. So we covered the Employment 101 and the different components of Employment 101 and Optimal Resume. And we did a demonstration of each of those. So as a next step, if you're not already a partner, then you can go ahead and go to lmyworknet.com and create or log into your lmyworknet account. Um, I want to again make sure that your organization is already set up as an lmyworknet partner. So if you don't have your organization as a partner, um, then you just you need to go ahead and add them as a partner or submit a request to become a partner. And then with number three, um, you send a request for a partner account by going to info at LMI WorkNet and then include you know, the reason that you want an LMI WorkNet partner account and you know, your name, the name of your organization, and then the organization address and your work phone number. And we just go through and make sure that the information is accurate and that it's a valid request to be a, have a partner account. And then we will set your a partner account, um, give you a partner, a partner account. And once that is complete, then you will be able to go in and set up your customer support center groups and your subgroups. And then you can start inviting customers to those groups or to your group and then add them to your subgroup. And you'll be able to view the customer information, provide guidance, all that kind of good stuff. And then you can also use the assessment dashboard to see an overview of where your customers are with, within that whole process or within you know, the, the process of completing their assessment. So thank you for participating today. And again, if you have any questions, always you can use our contact us. We're available from the web uh, website, or you can always send an email to info at lmiworknet.com. Thank you very much.